Hello everyone and welcome back to my Minecraft survival world. That's right, I'm back after pretty much one year of not uploading any videos, but I guess that's one of the few good things about not having very many subscribers because it means that it doesn't really matter. And yes, here is my beautiful survival world right here. I have not played in this world for um, quite a while, but recently I have been doing something pretty amazing and I've actually gone around and gone on a huge, huge, huge adventure literally to about 10,000 blocks so I think it's, it might have actually been 15,000 blocks out into the wilderness uh, in each direction, in like the X and Z directions which is completely and utterly ridiculous, I'm sure you'll agree so I went out pretty much uh, to go and explore to try and see if I could find any interesting new things uh, in the uh, in the latest updates, I wanted to go and see the villages and I wanted to you know be in a pillager raid and things like that because there is so much new stuff in this update, it's completely unreal and so I went out and I got quite a few things. I got quite a few different um, items of loot and I went and saw, you know, I went and saw the world <laughs> and now I'm back and it took a long long time to actually get back here. So I guess I'm just gonna go and show you everything uh, that I got from this adventure. And here it is, here is my ender chest, and you can see the stuff that I've already got in my inventory here. I've got some golden horse armor, things like that, a saddle. Not um, extremely amazing in terms of the loot here, but we've got loads of these buried treasure maps, so I guess we can find more and more treasure out there. And we've got some golden apples, some diamonds, and I've just got three emeralds here, but if we look in here, I've actually got about 35 emerald blocks uh, from all of the villagers that I've traded with, which is pretty insane uh, if you think about it. And I've got um, 24 bells, which I've sort of reclaimed from each of the villages that I've visited. So I think um, you, you can tell I've visited a lot of villages um, here because I've got 24 bells. I think in some of the villages there were two bells and also I didn't actually pick up some bells from some of the villages. So it might actually be more or less than this, but this is around about... Uh, 24 villages that I've visited basically. We've got some Nautilus shells here. I've got no clue what to do with those. Got some bottles of enchanting and some special golden apples, notch apples here. Uh, some more armor and uh, also um, I think I've got a book of impaling here which you can only find in I think it's the underwater uh, fortresses or the underwater ruins, the little monuments that you get down there. And, um, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is me back in my world, and there's so much to do in this place. Oh, and, uh, yeah, if you've, uh, <laughs> been hearing lots of dog noises recently, that's because I have six dogs, six pet wolves, if you like, uh, up here. And I actually had more, I actually had eight at one point, but then two went missing somewhere, because if you run too fast, then sometimes they get kind of stuck in water and they can't, uh, yeah, follow you. It's a bit crazy, um, but yeah, I mean, oh god, that was that was one heck of a crazy journey. Like I went very, very far. I'll put some screenshots of some of the things. That was scary. I'll put some screenshots of some of the things I actually saw out there. And uh, the only reason that I couldn't record uh, was mainly because, well, uh, my my recording software just stopped working and like as you can see my computer is still very laggy I'm not sure what's happened to it I tried to update the graphics drivers and things like that but uh, nothing seems to be working very well on my computer as you can probably tell in this very very choppy footage well everything is worse on my computer apart from my mic that is because I have upgraded my mic and hopefully it sounds a little bit better than uh, it used to, at least the audio uh, in my videos. And yeah, I'm back down here at this mine, trying to get some resources, build up my resources again. And uh, I had to actually repair this um, mending pickaxe, this efficiency five pickaxe. And to do that, I needed loads of XP. So what I did is I went and bred up all of the sheep that we have in our sheep farm. The only problem with that is I think it's actually causing most of the lag on this world. 
which is a slight disadvantage, but it's the only way I could really figure out uh, how to get loads of XP all at once. So, yes, we may have to deal with even more lag at the moment, but hopefully it's worth it. Oh, this is totally mad. Is this even a good idea? There is one positive to having loads of lag, which is that when the phantoms attack, you can just literally walk away and they, they can't catch up with you. So, yeah. I guess I love the lag. It's, it's brilliant. So, guys, as you can hopefully see here, I'm trying to make a completely OP sword like a god sword right here and I've already got sharpness and breaking, fire aspect mending and knockback at the highest levels and some people seem to really hate fire aspect and knockback for some reason but to be honest I'm kind of liking them, I'm just trying to add everything that I can into one sword but we're not done just yet because for yeah 28 XP which I don't have, we'll get to that in a second um, I can also add Sweeping Edge and Looting onto this, and it will be a completely mad sword. If you're wondering where I got all of these enchanted books from, well, from all of the fishing that I used to do in this world, I've still got tons and tons of enchanted books. And in fact, there's more enchanted books than you can even see here. There's quite a few left in the fishing farm over there, which I'm going to be rebuilding and hopefully using even more, because this thing is completely OP, as you can tell. But yes, we do need more XP, and uh, yeah... You know what that means. More breeding. Well, it is the moment of truth, people. Let us go and put this sword right here. Oh, yes. And add on these two enchantments. 28. And I've got 28 levels right here. Oh, yes. This is a super overpowered sword. And, uh, well, now I've got this super overpowered sword. I wonder what to do with it. Well, would you look at that? There's uh, <coughs> there's no lag. There's there's no lag at all in Minecraft. We've got 35 FPS. Yeah, not bad. Um, well, I don't know. Minecraft must have <coughs> had an update or something. And um, okay, I may have just gone and killed all the sheep. Um, <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty horrendous. All of the sheep. Well, I've kept like two in each pen. If that makes it any any more humane. I mean, oh, damn, that was traumatizing. All those. Those baby sheep looking up. Oh, don't want to think about it. But, whew. On the plus side, we do have lots and lots of cooked mutton to eat in these barrels. Um, and we have loads of wool as well. So that's fantastic. And we have no lag, which is the main reason why I actually had to, unfortunately, dispense with these sheep. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad if you think about it. Because I use the sheep to get the XP to actually enchant this sword. And then I use this OP sword to kill all of the sheep. Yeah, we probably shouldn't think about it too much, but, yeah, I mean, we've solved one problem, but we've also opened another, well, let's say a door of opportunity, because we no longer have the sheep, so we can't actually use them to get XP, right? So I think we're going to have to go and build ourselves an XP farm. That's right, we're going to have to build a huge, super cool XP farm, and, oh, just look at this sword do its magic. It's completely insane. But uh, before I do all of that, I'm going to go and trade with this invisible villager right here. Uh, well, wandering trader, even. So, he's got... Ooh, brown dye. No, that's useless. Bucket of puffer fish for five emeralds. Uh, you know what? I'm not really after that. Maybe the this nice little flower is quite a nice trade. Yeah, why not? I mean, this guy's come from so far away, right? He might have come from, like, literally miles and miles away. Poor guy, you know, he just wants a single trade. Might as well give him, like, an emerald. You know, I've got quite a few of those after my adventure, so... Uh, oh, and he's not invisible anymore. Hello, at least I can see you. It's a little bit better trading with someone you can actually see. And is that it? Is there no unlocked trades or anything? No? 
Maybe I need to trade with him a little bit more to unlock anything, but I'm probably not going to. Well, I guess, um, yeah, I can just put this down somewhere, maybe here. Uh, that's nice. Yeah, very, very good. Okay, anyway, back to trying to figure out how to build an XP farm. And as for the crazy amount of wool and mutton we got from that farm, yeah, quite a lot of wool right there and a hell of a lot of mutton as well. We've got tons and tons of stuff, so I think it's fair to say we won't be needing the sheep anymore. But just before I do go and build this XP farm, I'm going around and trying to improve my lag uh, and my performance on this PC even more by just lighting up this entire area and hopefully stopping any mobs from actually spawning. And huh, now I look at it, this is probably going to take a very, very long time, but it's probably quite a necessary thing. Uh, <laughs> I may have slightly forgotten about the mobs, and especially the phantoms. Oh, they are loud. They are bloody well loud. Ugh. These guys are completely insane. So guys, as always seems to happen with me, I've got completely distracted and in trying to light up all of the ground above us, I've went down into the caves to actually light them up as well. And now I've come across a spawner right here, which is very useful for an XP farm, <laughs> I think of it. So uh, that is quite a good, useful tangent to go on right there. So this is a skeleton spawner, which is pretty cool. And <laughs> now we have to deal with all of these guys. And ooh, there's a chest in there as well. That is pretty cool. I haven't raided one of these in a very long time, surprisingly. So seeing as I'm lighting up the place, let's light up this thing as well. And let's see what we've got in here. So we've got the golden horse armor, saddles, and name tags. I've got tons of those things. Ah, oh, and finally, a disc. 13. I think I might actually already have 13. But, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So, we've got ourselves a mob spawner. So I guess we can use this as part of our XP farm. I was thinking of making something a little bit bigger than a single mob spawner, though. So, I'm going to have to think about it. I'm going to have to think about whether I actually want to use this at all in making our XP farm or whether I want to go and build something on a really really huge scale um, but this is a good start so as you can see I have gone and lit up this entire area everything is pretty much lit up there are some small patches where I actually need to go and light the place up but yes the Sun is rising and we're standing on a pillow if you're wondering why it's two blocks uh, along well some phantoms came and attacked me and when I say some I mean many many phantoms have been coming and completely slaughtering me not killing me luckily because obviously I'm a, a pro phantom hunter at this point but boy oh boy there have been tons and tons of these guys and uh, sometimes I don't even go and pick up the phantom membrane drop anymore that's how much of this stuff I've got and I think you can make potions of slow falling with it uh, so I can probably make some of those Okay, so I have come across another spawner right here. This time we've got a zombie spawner, and let's just deal with this guy. Um, and I've kind of decided not to use these spawners uh, to actually create the XP farm. I want it to be a lot bigger, and yep, we've just got the same old music discs and uh, a couple of other things here. And I don't think there is another chest, so that wasn't the best loot in the world. So I'm mostly done lighting up all of the caves down there. Um, although I think I'll probably need to go and still finish up a little bit of that and um, I've probably missed some here and there but you know we can get that done over time I guess I've also lit up or rather marked out with these crazy little arrows where the spawners are so we can go back and actually get those whenever we need them although I'm probably not going to be using them for this XP farm like I say because I want to do something a little bit bigger and I think those two far those two um, spawners are just way too small uh, and they, they just won't give us enough XP. I mean, I'm thinking on a on a super grand scale here, to be honest, like I usually am in this world. But, yes, I've also gone and completely pillaged all of the landscape of any ores that I could find. As you can see, I've got tons and tons of ores in my inventory. I do go a little bit crazy when I mine. And if you're wondering what all of this is, well... When I went on my super long adventure into the wilderness, I went and actually got loads and loads of bamboo. And as you can see, I've tried to grow some of it here and it's got a little bit out of hand, you could say. I mean, probably needs a little bit, you know, a little bit of care here and there. 
a little bit of trimming, maybe, just a little. But, I don't know, I mean, it really brightens up the area, and I'm, I'll probably just leave it the way it is. You may also notice um, certain things in Minecraft aren't as they should be, perhaps. The shield is a little bit lower, which is a lot better, to be honest, in my opinion. And uh, we also have, like, a circular moon, uh, whereas we usually have a square one. We also have a circular sun, and uh, the water's a lot more transparent, and things like that. And I think... Oh, God, that was loud. I think the phantoms are also attacking me, so I think I'm just going to hide. Because I've I've dealt with way too many phantoms now. I've really had enough of the phantoms, so I'm going to hide over here. Hopefully they can't find me. But, yes... I've gone and downloaded uh, Exuma's Vanilla Tweaks resource pack, which is really, really cool. And uh, you can download it too from this link right here. Uh, and it really adds a lot to the game. It just gives you these little tweaks. So you can see, for example, the numbers um, and all of the fonts in Minecraft are also kind of rounded off now. The same way they are in the Faithful texture pack, which I really, really love. So hopefully all these little things just add something to the game and make it feel a whole lot better. Um, yeah, I may have gone and died, that is right, I've gone and lost everything. Uh, I fell into lava, which isn't always the best way to die, is it? I mean, oh, lost all my items as well. Unfortunately, I have lost that super cool sword as well, which we made, and also uh, my feather falling boots, and uh, I think I had a super cool bow as well, which I made, so all of that is unfortunately gone, but I can make it all again, eventually. Uh, so that's what I'm going to have to do. And, by the way, if you're looking at these textures, yeah, these are the vanilla tweaks te textures, which really, really improve things. But, ah, oh, that has just put a downer on the whole episode. Oh, everything was going so well. But we're going to have to stick it out and uh, figure out how to gear up again and uh, try and build this XP farm. And you know what? Just for fun, I'm going to go back in iron. Yes, we're going to... We're going to use some iron armor and hopefully this <laughs> will look nice and snazzy. I haven't worn iron armor for quite a while now, so I'm probably going to have to be a little bit careful around mobs, but this is the way we're going to have to go. So guys, I'm just in my redstone testing world right here, trying to figure out uh, exactly how to build this XP farm and how to most effectively kill the mobs so we can get all of the XP as quickly as possible. Essentially, the whole idea that I'm going for here is to try and get loads of XP all with just the click of one button. So it's about getting loads of XP as fast as possible and uh, as easily as possible essentially. So here we've got um, a simple mob farm design. You've just got a single spawning platform here. This one is by Pixel Rifts and I'll leave a link in the description to the episode where he actually made this thing. Um, but as you can see you just have four droppers in or dispensers in each of the corners which uh, dispense the water and then the mobs come down here and uh, this thing may look a bit, little bit complicated but it's really just a thing to collect all of the mobs up and put them down into this killing area right here and uh, what I was trying to do is figure out how to um, get the XP as quickly as possible like I was saying so if we press this button here that you can see oh, if we don't fall off the platform you can see that we've got um, TNT coming out and hopefully that would actually be able to kill the mobs but the only problem with having TNT uh, and killing the mobs with that is that if we actually spawn some mobs in here and uh, press this button um, it doesn't actually drop any XP so as you see the the mobs do die but you don't get any XP from that at all I tried like um, lighting the TNT by hand and then moving it using uh, these pistons like this and sometimes it works, um, obviously if you light the TNT by hand you will get all of the XP, but sometimes the piston doesn't actually even move the um, the TNT once it's lit. So I'm not sure how that really works and I kind of don't want my entire contraption to blow up. So while doing my research I came across a really really old video by Etho where he was building an ender farm uh, where he had loads of spawning platforms in the end and uh, he was actually using that to get himself loads of XP. And obviously I haven't been to the end yet, so we can't do the same thing. But uh, I was thinking that um, the way he actually killed the mobs using TNT uh, was something that I could replicate here. So um, even though we're not killing Enderman, um, it's kind of a good idea to have all of the mobs funneled into this C section and have TNT blow them all up in the middle. So if I show you 
what I'm kind of thinking here. Uh, if I just spawn in loads of mobs right here, we have loads of TNT up there. Uh, if I go down into this hole right here, which is probably where I'd be in survival mode, and by the looks of things, the phantoms don't even leave me when I'm in creative. Uh, they're always following me everywhere. Um, but if I go and actually explode some of this TNT here, uh, you can see that the mobs would take damage. And of course, ideally, if they've fallen a certain amount of distance, if you just imagine uh, this entire mob farm having been like above here, and all of the mobs being, you know, falling down onto a platform and being channeled into this C section right here, um, they would actually not need uh, that many TNT blocks to actually get them uh, completely killed. In fact, I would aim for uh, them to be able to be killed by just one TNT explosion. So, a bit of a change of plan here. You can see that I funneled the mobs directly into a 4x4 four four section where they're kind of contained and that means that it only takes a single block of TNT to kill all of them all at once, even if they have no fall damage whatsoever, which is this case uh, because you can see we've got the water there which actually stops the TNT from blowing everything up, which is quite useful to be honest. Um, but yes, we have a hole in the bottom of our mob spawner right here, or at least the, the mob containment part of it, uh, which is not a good sentence to be saying most of the time, but in this case, it's a very useful hole because it allows us, if I just go into survival mode right here, um, to use our flame bow to go and actually... Well, I didn't expect that to happen. Maybe that's a slight flaw with the system. Okay, so I think I have actually solved that problem. Basically, a skeleton um, was doing the dirty work for me in there. Oh, and it's happened again. Never mind, maybe I haven't... Yeah, maybe I haven't solved the problem at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't think this really makes for the best mob farm, does it? I mean, I may have just blown up the entire system. Well, that didn't solve the problem either, by the looks of things. On second thoughts, I don't think it's going to be possible to actually fire an arrow through the mob platform itself and get to the TNT. I think that's a really impractical way of doing it. So I've created a little workaround here. Uh, if I drink this night vision potion, uh, you can see we've got some TNT there on the side and some water there. So you can fire up at the TNT and the TNT will fall down into uh, the mob pit there. So this hopefully should work a little bit better. Um, than the other system and I think it's a lot simpler as well because if the mobs are there on the platform you also kind of have to avoid the mobs and they all do get pushed into this one corner but it's still not very effective all the time so if I go and get myself a bow here and some arrows and hopefully some mobs will fall down yeah there we go we've got one spider and a, a creeper and a couple of other things so if we go here and actually fire up at this TNT and that goes down into the platform, we'll also get some damage. I think that's because of these half blocks. If I get rid of those, we won't take any damage and we'll get some XP. So that does actually work pretty well. And for some reason, some of the XP seems to be, um, you know, getting stuck in the corners there, which is not very good. Um, but overall, the system does work very well. But as you can see here, if I try and get the TNT which is actually above that, it doesn't work. So there is some TNT uh, right above there, um, but because of the water, the, the flame effect doesn't seem to work. And sometimes it, it does work and sometimes it doesn't, but it's not a very reliable way of doing it. So the next thing that I have to do is figure out how to create a kind of a piston chain, um, which can push all of these TNT blocks up the side of this uh, this whole tower here and into this position right here, which shouldn't be too difficult to be fair. I did not expect this thing to take this long, but it is finally finished. We have our TNT loop, our feed loop right there. And ignore this big redstone uh, torch tower. This is just there uh, to turn the farm on and off. So as you can see at the moment, the farm is actually off because we've got all of the light preventing the mobs from spawning. But if I go down here and uh, turn this lever right here, um, the farm will actually switch on and it will start to get mobs spawning since we're in hard difficulty. Uh, and you can see how this works. So it's pretty simple. Um, all I have to do is go ahead here 
and light that TNT as we've been doing before and that goes and blows up in that area right there uh, and that's all just the same as we knew before but if we put a piece of TNT here you can see pretty quickly we get the next piece um, up there so it's kind of reloading for us and uh, that's really really useful when you're in survival because you don't want to be going up there yourself and actually reloading this thing um, so yeah this works really really well and um, everything else is pretty much the same um, but there is one a pretty serious problem with this system which is that if I go and like this one and place another one directly yeah that one gets stuck and you know what's gonna happen next pretty insane isn't it so basically I want to ensure that that doesn't happen in survival and uh, luckily on this world I have world edit so all I need to go and do is that and everything's back to normal but unfortunately in survival mode I don't have such a luxury right so if everything blew up it would be a complete nightmare to um, restore everything so I'm gonna have to make sure not to put another piece of TNT down before um, that piece of TNT has completely fully exploded and there's also another problem if I place in another piece of TNT there you can see that this one pushes um, that iron bar down which is not what we want as well uh, so when there's a piece of TNT there I'm gonna have to remember not to place another one down here as well so it's kind of not the the most optimized system but it's something which will probably do for me because it makes the whole process of killing the mobs so much easier um, but yeah everything else is pretty much the same so hopefully this thing should work pretty well I think this is a good time to mention that the actual mob spawner here is not the one that we're going to be using. I only use this Pixel Rifts uh, design as a temporary mob spawner so that we could test out the functionality of the mob killing system down below. So what I'm actually going to do is build a much much bigger farm than this so I'm just probably going to expand the design and I'm also going to try and stop spiders from spawning because they seem to like clog up the system and they can you know climb up all of the walls and things like that which is really really annoying so I'm gonna try and stop spiders from spawning and I'm also gonna try and have multiple levels to this thing and expand it out in all directions um, while trying to maintain all of the efficiency of it um, so that we get loads and loads of mobs spawning all at once and coming down into the into the um, actual area down here where we can kill them and hopefully that will give us much more XP but unfortunately we have run out of time for today's episode so if you did like it please be sure to leave a like uh, to show me uh, that this is the kind of content that you like to see and also feel free to subscribe as well but that is it for today guys so I will see you in the next one